Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be ranking every single Thomas K. Young game. I've never really ranked every game before, but this is going to be a first, and we're going to see which one's the best in the Thomas K. Young that he has created. So let's do this. Seven, Flowerster. So Flowerster is basically this bird type of game where basically you're just trying to avoid objects, like, and basically enemies, bloody enemies, and other types of things. Now this game might seem really cool, but at the same time, this game, well, how do I say it? It's ridiculously simple, and the thing is though, it's in one screen. So this is the very first version. It's just that it's not that great. Having it in one screen for everything makes it not such a fun time. When I played it the first time, when I played it for quick play, I just, God, the game isn't fun at all. If you like these kind of games, maybe you'll have some enjoyment. The thing is, though, there's better versions. There's Super Flowerster, Super Flowerster 2. Those games are much, much better. But this game is just not it. And it's just not a game that I really recommend. So if you like maybe, like, nostalgic reasons, then maybe you might enjoy this game. But I never had a fit to play this ever again. Six, Super Flowerster. Okay, well, technically, I said that Super Flowerster is a lot better than Flowerster. The thing is, though, it's the graphics just don't do it for me. It is a lot better because now it actually focuses on screens and stuff, and you can actually go from side to side and stuff. And while that's cool, the thing is, though, this game is, oh my god, it is brutal. The game is very difficult, and I can understand that, but, like, Honestly, just in the graphics department, that's the worst part. But at the same time, the game is brutal, which I can understand for all the Flowerster games. But this game is just not great to play. It's I don't think it aged well. It just, I don't know, the enemies don't look that great. The characters don't look that great. Everything doesn't look the greatest. And it's not a game that I recommend it to anyone. And I don't know, I just really didn't enjoy my time playing Super Flowerster. And there's a better Flowerster, which I'll mention soon. But yeah, it's just not a great game. I definitely don't recommend it to anyone who likes this version. I like the other one, which I'll talk about later. Five, Daily Daddish. So I've been playing this for a long time right now. My opinions for this game is, well, it's either it has great level design, has credible, you know, platforming sections, or it's a frustrating mess. I'm very mixed by this game because it's a fun time. But it's also one of the most frustrating times you ever play, which I can totally understand. Daily Daddish has difficult levels because we can't always have easy levels that make sense. So there's a lot of difficult levels. The thing is, though, this game just really, I don't know, it's, after when you play it for a while, maybe you might have enjoyment of the game. But at the same time, this game, you just have level after level. There's so many levels, obviously, eventually it will end like in February and stuff. But it's just, I don't know, it's its a great game. It's just that some levels are a bit frustrating, some are great. I don't know, I'm really mixed with this game. But if you like Daily Daddish, maybe you might have enjoyment. But I don't know, I'm really mixed by this game. But I still play it because some levels are actually interesting and creative. But yeah, I'm very mixed by Daily Daddish. And that's what I feel like from that game. What I feel from this game, honestly. Four, Daddish, the very first game in the entire series of Daddish. Daddish is an incredible game, although I couldn't complete um, the final world in the game. I think it's because I was frustrated by a section. But other than that, Daddish is just in an incredible time. I absolutely adore this game. It was an incredible game, and I actually learned from this game from one of my friends, um, Nihar, and he basically just told me about the game and I really was so excited to play it and while I never completed it during the first time I eventually tried to complete it in the next year and while I didn't complete it I still had a fun time and it was an incredible experience it was so magical it was just an incredible indie platformer for me and I just loved Addish it was an incredible game well Technically, when you play it now, it hasn't really aged that well. And also, the iOS version doesn't include the ice cream world, which is really upsetting. But 
Oh, well. And also, it just messed up, messed up the ice cream version. <laughs> they forgot the ice cream itself. Dang it. But, I mean, both versions are pretty good, so I can understand that. But, overall, it's an incredible time, and I absolutely love this game. It's just an incredible experience. Actually, before we move on to the next number, can I just show you an iconic moment from the entire data series? Okay, so someone's laziest here. Hey! W what? Get out! Excuse me! This is a new dad zone! Get lost! That's it! You're grounded, mister! Sorry! <laughs> you should have been careful! Three, Super Flower Sir 2. Now, I yes, this is a bit of a frustrating game, like I expected, but the graphics are so much better. First off, the style is based specifically on the 2D style, a little bit better. A lot better. This kind of, like, replicates the data style, but in a much better way, and it looks so much colorful. It, sure, there's some bloody sections, but at the same time, the game looks so much better. The play, gameplay is so much better, and this is a version you definitely want to play, if you're interested in just kind of crazy gameplay, and if you're like really frustrated with stuff, I can understand that. It's a very difficult game, but I absolutely love its epic difficulty, its incredible gameplay levels. Even the bosses are pretty good. The bosses are one of the best parts in the entire game. And while they're very frustrating to manage, it's an incredible game. And it's a lot better than the bosses in Super Flower Star, or just Flower Star. Super Flower Star 2 is in a better experience and overall just the better flower star experience to play and i know it's a hard game but i definitely think some people will enjoy this game as much as i do two is fittingly that is two so that is two is well one of the most greatest games that i've ever played although there is some frustrating sections this game is incredible from the start to finish as an incredible story. Obviously, in every single Danish game, it's the kids getting, you know, um, left behind and stuff and going into dangerous set sections. But the game is incredible. It has incredible bosses. My favorite being, of course, Space Darkena. That's the main villain who is Lord Darkena, but he's, you know. And just an incredible experience as an incredible story, incredible levels. You even see one with Burglar at one point, which is incredible. You even get to control him, which is incredible. He was, like, one of the main bosses in the first game, but now you get to play with him. Although, we eventually found out his true natures. But overall, it's an incredible experience. And I absolutely love Data Shoes bosses and stuff. Like, the one of the most funniest ones is Maureen, even though I completed it in first try. It was a really funny boss, and I absolutely love that boss. And it everything was just incredible. It was an enjoyable experience. But it's not number one, and that's for one good reason. And that number one is one Daddish three. Daddish three is the biggest ambitious Daddish experience ever. I absolutely love this game. Now, yes, this game is again a bit frustrating, but that's because levels have to be like that. But it's incredible. You even get to team up with the villain, who is later revealed to be, of course. Lord Khan Rudd, who's, well, if you flip it backwards, it's actually dark enough, but, you know, that's cool. And then you even get to play as Daddish with Daddish's, you know, the tomato person, like that she, and she's actually pretty cool to control. I think it's Momoto, I think, but yeah, it's an incredible thing, and oh yeah, so you get to even unlock characters and stuff. The best part is Pasta of the Panic, and every Daddish game, you get to collect every character and i think just having one character is good enough particularly dadish has so many characters and not that it's bad but i think one character just really solidifies everything this game dadish 3 is ambitious the story is again the same but as ambitious worlds and the final world of water worlds is incredible and i absolutely love it every single world is incredible and although i was frustrated at one point where i was trying to complete a level had to wait two weeks, and then eventually I completed it. I still enjoy this game, and it's a game that you guys should definitely try, and that is three. It's an incredible experience that I'll never forget. Thanks for watching my ambitious ranking. I just want to say, Thomas K. Young, 
that you made incredible games, and while they're not always perfect, it's an incredible time and magical experience for an indie developer like you. Anyways, thanks for watching. Goodbye!